Nuestro amigo Jean nos manda este video. Jean está como loco, es una máquina de conseguir contenido. Y particularmente con Jean le estamos dando un seguimiento a Jordan Peterson. ¿Por qué? Porque de verdad a mí me interesa saber cómo es su acercamiento a la fe cristiana. Y que pese que hoy por hoy, que yo sepa, no es cristiano, pese a eso, eh, está en cada, en cada declaración deja rastros, huellas, de que cada vez su afinidad al cristianismo es mayor. En este video, supuestamente, según el título, dice Jordan Peterson tiene una visión con el cielo, Dios y Satanás. A ver, vamos a ver a ver qué es lo que dice nuestro amigo Jordan. Once, I shouldn't tell you this, but I will anyways. I had a vision once that that I went to heaven and and I was put in a in a Roman amphitheater. Para, 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 porque esto arranca muy fuerte. Arranca muy fuerte. Claro, a ver, él está dando una conferencia, está una, dando una charla. Las charlas, a la, las charlas a las que lo invitan a participar son charlas de nivel académico, rigor académico, ¿se entiende? Por lo general, no hay sentado ahí personas que, no sé, que, 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 que no han terminado sus estudios o cosas por el estilo. Son charlas de rigor académico. Entonces, creo que esa es la razón por la que, por un, por un preconcepto que hay en algunos sectores académicos contra la fe, esa es la razón por la que él dice, no, debe, no debería decir esto, pero lo haré, dice. Yo no, en, este, en este momento la verdad es que no debería decir esto. ¿Por qué? Y porque acá se me invitó a otra cosa. Guarda, me gusta mucho esto porque el flaco lo que está acá diciendo es me importa muy poco la opinión de terceros, yo voy a ser honesto y voy a decir lo que realmente pienso y siento. Eso garpa full mikis. <laughs> encountering the Hulk, right? That's coming up in that new Avengers movie. And so, that was rather... Guarda, porque esto es una referencia de hace muy poquito tiempo. There was shock, because I thought that was a hell of a thing to happen in heaven. And so I had this battle, and I won. And at the end, I came up to God and said, like, you know, what's with the whole Roman amphitheater thing there? It seemed like a bit over the top to me. I said, why would you put me in a ring with something like that? And he said, because I knew you could win. And you know, I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> One thing I should, should make of it is I shouldn't tell you, but whatever. But there's something, there's something to that in my estimation. It's like, do you protect the people you love or do you try to make them strong? So you think it's that, it's not that we have like Satan to thank for making us substantial. It's that God gave us Satan in order to make us substantial. ¿Qué quieren decir con sustancial ahí? Eso no lo entendí, evidentemente, porque no tenemos el contexto, ¿no? Well, I'd hesitate to say that because, you know, it's it's so cut and dried. But I would say that, that there's a that's a strong underlying theme in the biblical narrative. Yes. Now, it's certainly not the only theme. It's not the only interpretation by any stretch of the imagination. But there is something there, and there's something there. You know, at the end, we didn't talk about this. God puts up this flaming sword and these cherubim to keep you away from the tree of life. It's like If paradise and immortality are the promised land, then why, what's with the whole flaming angel and sword thing? We could have just had the damn fruit 5,000 years ago and not bothered with the problem. Well, it seems to me that there's something like consciousness through tragedy, clarity through suffering, maybe something like that. Or maybe the perfection that lurks as a potential in the future is something that has to be earned rather than given. Maybe it has no value without free choice. Maybe we have to distinguish between good and evil now that we have the capacity to actually apprehend them. Maybe that's what life is about. Maybe that's the separating of the wheat from the chaff. See, that's the idea in Revelation, right? Because when Christ comes back in the book of Revelation, he divides the damned from the saved. And the saved are the people who lived in Logos, roughly speaking, and, and the damned are those who don't. And so there's this idea that there's this dynamic that underlies experience that is in fact that sorting now i don't know what to make of that at all but that's the story but what i can make of that is that 
I can't put a lever underneath the argument that I just made tonight about the relationship between the development of vision, the snake, the fruit, nakedness, time, the future, work, and most importantly, the emergence of evil. That seems to me to be, I cannot find a way to undermine that argument. It seems I can't break it. And that's what I'm always looking for when I'm trying to formulate ideas. I'm trying to look for something that no matter how hard I try, I cannot break. And I can't break that set of ideas. Now, what the full implication is of that set of ideas, God only knows, right? But, but I could say also practically, you know, one of the things that I've observed is that lies and deception destroy people's lives. And when they start telling the truth and acting it out, things get a lot better. Muy bueno, muy, muy bueno, la verdad. Muy bueno, muy reflexivo, como notarán el, el análisis que, 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 que Jordan Peterson hace al, al texto bíblico. Es realmente muy reflexivo. Yo para mí se está tomando muy en serio el tema de la fe, muy en serio. Y para decir públicamente que tuvo una visión, pese a que no sabemos qué es lo que quiere decir con la palabra visión, ¿no? Eh, yo le meto ficha a esto Yo lo meto ficha y lo seguimos de cerca Déjame saber en los comentarios Qué opinas al respecto